This classic car might look archaic, but it doesn't sound it. As I slow down, you can hear the springs creaking, which you wouldn't hear at all if the two-stroke engine were running. And when I step on the gas, it's sheer driving pleasure. Dirk Lehmann turns vintage cars into e-models. He fits trucks with fuel cells and also uses mini power plants to supply huge ships in Hamburg's docks with clean energy. I think out of the box. I see what's technically possible. And then there's no stopping him. This car is 80 years old and enjoying a revival. You can revel in the scenery with the roof down with barely a sound. It's not about changing the climate. You can't do that with a classic car. But you can send out a signal and help get people thinking that it is possible to change something if you really want to. Electrically powered vintage cars are all the rage. Their old combustion engines have very high emissions, a burden on both the environment and the conscience of a lot of drivers. And they may soon be banned from city streets. Dirk Lehmann has turned electrification into a burgeoning business model. First, the engine and transmission are removed before new components are custom fitted depending on the model. His customers pay up to 100,000 euros for the transformation. They're enthusiasts who are fed up and now want to drive an electric car. That's how it started in 2015, with people who wanted an alternative to a boring old Tesla, basically an iPad on wheels. They wanted to reinvent their own beloved car. Lehmann also tackles much larger vehicles. His company, Clean Logistics, fits truck tractor units with fuel cells. He dreams of zero emissions freight transport and would like to cooperate with large truck manufacturers. But why has the response been so underwhelming? I don't know, and to be perfectly honest, I don't care. Because it's not our job to lecture some big manufacturer. We convert vehicles, and I'm not interested in why others aren't doing it now. The main thing is we can show that it can be done. Once a vehicle arrives, we start to rip everything out. Like with this skeleton here. All that's left is the cab, the frame, and the front axle. And then we rebuild the rear axle, the tanks behind the cab, the fuel cells on the left and right, and in the middle of the ladder frame, everything you need on the periphery, and the batteries up front. The EU wants to cut CO2 emissions from road traffic by 40% by 2030. Meeting that target will mean changing the power systems for trucks. There's always been change. A century ago, we still had the horse and cart. There have always been changes, and we are on the verge of the next one. We do customized conversions, and for commercial customers, we can do trucks. We hail from the regular and classic car sector. We started out with a little tractor. This vintage 1958 model, to be precise, this is how Dirk Lehmann gets around on his horse farm in Vinson near Hamburg. This all-electric tractor used to be powered by a diesel engine until six years ago when Dirk was leading a harvest festival procession. It was a very hot September day. The thing stank, and behind me were the women of our village in their beautiful dresses. And they said, enough with that stench. So I climbed down and thought, next year do it differently. You can keep the tractor, but you somehow need to make it electric. The electricity for the tractor comes from wind turbines. Wind power is at an all-time high in Germany. How about using it to produce hydrogen? All that's needed is an electrolyzer, which can produce hydrogen from electricity and water at low cost. You have to look at the overall picture. What good to me is a hydrogen truck without hydrogen? Or hydrogen without a truck? 
we have to bring it all together. I'm a technophile. I love trying out this technology and bringing it to market and making it commercially viable. And underlining it all is the desire to do something for the environment. And it's fun seeing that you can make a difference, that you really can do something with technology and roll it out. Dirk uses his e-vintage cars for his daily commute to the city. In Hamburg, he runs Becker Marine Systems, which specializes in marine propulsion. I normally drive electric, especially when traveling between my companies daily, within Hamburg or occasionally to Bremen too. But sometimes I have to fly. I don't have the time to sail everywhere like Greta. And the question is, to what extent it's appropriate? Greta would say, are you nuts? Change your business model. But I do have to say that our energy saving systems have saved 8 million tons of CO2 in 10 years. And I've only been able to do that because I've spent a lot of time in Asia. The young Swedish environmental activist Greta Thunberg would probably approve. Lehmann's idea has taken off, especially in Asia. He's revolutionized the world of shipping by adding a nozzle to the ship's propeller. That improves the flow, reducing fuel consumption as well as CO2 emissions. To date, this invention has been installed in over 1,400 of the world's largest ships, and that number is set to grow. One big cruise ship in the port of Hamburg is as much as all Hamburg diesel engines year-round combined. What I really want is zero emissions shipping, but we have to start not with giant container ships, but with small things. For example, a floating power station in the port of Hamburg. How about building a ship that generates electricity? You then link it up to power a cruise ship, and the electricity comes from natural gas. Sounds great. But he encounters tons of bureaucratic hurdles as he tries to introduce ecology on the water. He says the problem is excessive safety requirements and antiquated laws. Still, with his power pack project, he succeeded early on in establishing an important network with the Port of Hamburg and the shipping companies, with the support of the German Transport Ministry. Power packs are natural gas-powered mini power plants in container form. They use clean energy to replace cargo ships' diesel generators. The power packs will play a pretty big role in many ports around the world in the future. They'll be a reliable source of clean port electricity for ships. We'll roll out the power packs on a national and international scale, and we're in the process of making them even cleaner. They already use natural gas as their fuel, and the big vision is for them to run on hydrogen. Even after work, he can't stop thinking about sustainability. For example, how could the planned hydrogen production at the wind turbines also benefit the power packs in the port? I'm very lucky to be able to do these things. You have to start out with a project like this, without blinkers. You have to talk to people with completely different perspectives. And if you can bring that together, this network I have, the network my partners have, and pull it all together and come up with completely new ideas, and we don't let anything stand in the way of these ideas, we just do it. Because there's no time left for endless thinking. Emissions of CO2 and other greenhouse gases simply must be reduced to limit climate change. Everyone knows that. But Dirk Lehmann is trying to do something about it. <laughs>